I'm going to let you into a secret. Sometimes monitoring animals for conservation is a total nightmare. But today on RZSS Goes Wild, we're going to find out how using camera traps like these can help us monitor the species that we're trying to save and also give us some amazing insights into the secret lives of these animals. <coughs> The Royal Zoological Society of Scotland's conservation team is involved with monitoring some pretty tricky threatened species. Some of them are nocturnal and only come out at night, others are really well camouflaged or hide in burrows, some of them are just in places that are really hard to access, and in all of these cases, camera traps can help us find out what's going on. To help me out with this video, I'm going to bring in our conservation manager, Dave Barkley, a man who definitely knows his way around a camera trap. Now camera traps like this one are a really important part of our conservation toolbox. We can leave these cameras in the field in horrendous conditions through the winter and continuously they'll capture images and videos so we can increase our learning about species ecology, behaviour and activity patterns. For example, in our Scottish Beavers project it would be awesome to be able to fit all the beavers with radio tags and know exactly where they are at any one time. But unfortunately, radio tags don't stay on beavers very well because they're really good at pulling them off. And so instead of doing that, we use camera traps uh, in between our six monthly surveys to find out what the beavers in Napdale are up to. And this means we can watch them going about their normal business, building dams, maintaining their lodges, and just check out who's who and where they are. For other projects, camera traps have been the start of something really big, as explained here by our project partner in Brazil, Dr. Arno Desbias, who works on the giant armadillo project. It was through camera traps that this whole project started. 10 years ago, I went uh, out in the field with seven camera traps to try to learn more and document giant armadillos. And essentially, that's what started this whole project. Um, the first images of a giant armadillo were absolutely captivating, and that just got me hooked on giant armadillos, and this whole thing snowballed, and now look at us. We have our own NGO, 10 full-time staff, working with six PhD students, 12 master's students, over 40 uh, partnerships. It became huge, and that was basically through just uh, pictures with camera traps. Sometimes we just need camera traps to help us figure out where animals are. That's particularly true in the case of some of the smaller cat species that we work with. Here at RZSS, we've been using camera traps for over 10 years to help support some of our amazing cat conservation projects, be that for the wild cat here in the Highlands of Scotland or the small and shy elusive palaces cat across Central Asia. Palaces cat live in vast areas of inaccessible mountains. The camera traps are really useful for helping us track them down and for discovering that they're just as playful as any other species of cat. Scottish wildcats are so scarce in the wild that camera trap networks are really useful in discovering where they are and what they're up to. Although sometimes they're a little too keen on the cameras. Camera traps can also give us insight on breeding and reproduction. In Napdale, we want to know how many beavers are having kits. Kits do sometimes pop up on cameras if we're lucky, but they're often missed because they're small. But sometimes camera traps give us other evidence of what's going on. This is Iona, a female beaver in Napdale. Here, as she stretches up to reach a branch, we can see that she has two rows of nipples. Beavers only develop nipples if they have kits, so this gave us a pretty good idea that Iona had had kits that year. We later confirmed that Iona had two kits, which we wouldn't have known to look for without the camera trap footage. Arno's team also learned a lot about giant armadillo breeding behaviour using camera traps. We have been able to register some and get some of my favourite pictures, which was, which was documenting their reproduction. We were able to register the first time the female uh, had her pup and all the behavior associated with that. We were also able to uh, look at all the parental care and how long that lasted. And through camera traps, in fact, we discovered that giant armadillos provide fantastic parental care to their pups. And they learned that giant armadillo burrows were performing another important function too. 
we also been able to document and describe one of the most, uh, I think, fantastic roles of giant armadillos in the ecosystem, which which is that giant armadillos uh, provide a, an important ecosystem service to the community of animals where they, that they share the habitat with. They they dig these burrows and spend all day deep underground. Then at night they go out to forage on ants and termites, and most often than not, they will abandon that burrow and go to another one. These burrows are then used by other species. We have documented over 70 species using giant armadillo burrows. The camera traps are clearly very useful in the wild, but what about in other situations? It's not just field projects where we're using these camera traps. More and more, we're using these cameras at both of our zoos, Edinburgh Zoo and here at the Highland Wildlife Park. They've been fantastic in giving us new information about behaviours or activities or even animal introductions when the keepers aren't here. And for the likes of the wildcat, where we have animals in large offshore conservation breeding enclosures, they've been critical in allowing us to monitor their behaviour and reproduction when they have kittens. So whether we're watching beavers go about their business or discovering important new parental behaviours in palaces cats, Camera traps are a vital conservation tool. The camera traps we use in our conservation projects and much of our other field equipment is partly funded by visitors to our zoos. Unfortunately, both of our zoos are currently closed, but you can still help keep an eye on threatened species in the wild by following the link you can see here or above or below the video and donating whatever you can to conservation. In the next episode of Our ZSS Goes Wild, we're off to Nepal to find out how DNA from poo can tell us what tigers are having for tea. Don't miss it. <laughs>